Wait a fucking second. Not this man using my money, my life earned money to go and spend it on these silly girls in the UK. And you know, in her head probably, as me it would be in mine. Like in my mind I would be thinking, Hi guys, welcome back to uh, my uh, channel and welcome back to another episode of Looks and Crooks. Bro, that was so annoying. Why did I say off like that? Like, ew, ew, you guys, ew, ew. You guys actually like me because you guys keep coming back here to listen to me just say no things. Anyway, guys, I am here today with the part two to this makeup look. I am also here with another case for you guys so that we can, you know, have something to do on that Monday morning. You know, wake up and feel like, yes. There's somebody who's thinking about me, dear. There's somebody who thinks who thinks I need something to watch as I'm getting my arse off to work through this entire week. And that is me, guys. Anyway, without further ado, let us get right into this video. Today's case is actually... Oh, sorry. I will link the video that where I did this last makeup look over here. It will also be at the end. Like, at the end, the, in the end, there's like a little box that comes up right here. I'll put that video there. Anyway, today's case, we're actually going to be doing another Nigerian case. Because last week, we actually did a Nigerian case case um it was a sugar baby case so if you're interested in that have a look however today we are going to be talking about a case where the woman was not a sugar baby she was actually a wife those of you who like saying you better make sure to get that ring from that man you know once your wife up nothing can ever happen now girl these men will surprise you they will shock you and today's case we are going to be talking about miss ada johnson woman the legend the woman who dared to cross a white man in colonial nigeria Let's get right into it. So who was Ada? Ada was a black African Igbo woman who was alive during the 1950s. There's not much of like in terms of the dates of this case because I actually saw this case on Twitter and I read a case like this in like a book that's like a compilation of African stories. But yeah, Ada was a black woman and she actually grew up in Igbo land during the Nigerian colonialization times. She was one of the women who really, really did well for herself. Ada was very well educated because she could read and write, which is something that not many African women or even white women could do during this time because feminism had just come etc. Ada did very well for herself and she was able to get a job as a typewriter, like someone who just typed, like used the typewriter and wrote for someone else. And she was actually making good, good money. Ada, by the age of 22 years old, had saved 400 pounds to her name. And that wasn't small rice and beans by that time like during that time in history 400 pounds could really pay for somebody's entire university life so she was doing well for herself however as an educated black african woman during this time she really had a problem being able to find an african man that matched her education level and knew what exactly he was supposed to be doing with himself during the time because like i'm telling you this colonial times on top of yes a lot of black men didn't go to school because they would rather do practical work a lot of the issue really stemmed from the fact that the white people really didn't allow the black men to prosper in terms of things like that like they would give you like jobs but they were practical jobs they were never really like academic based jobs like you really had to try as a black man to be able to get a job in academia etc so ada was really finding it hard to find a man who was educated like her and on top of that who actually had a good job that she could rely on and sustainably you know bring income furthermore she also wanted a very like po a, not a poly marriage like during this time a lot of african men really did marry like multiple women at the time so she was also looking for a man who only had like one wife she didn't want to be like wife number two wife number three wife number one she didn't want to furthermore ada had fallen for something called the romance scam now what is the romance scam the romance scam is something that really happened a lot during colonial times in africa where white men would come from abroad and because the white the white men seemed more quote-unquote empowered and had more access to resources let's be honest than the black african men they really managed to cheat the white they really managed to get a lot of the African women believing that, hey, if you sleep with me, you'll be able to have this access to these resources because the black men were really oppressed ETC. And so for the women, a lot of them, the only way to be able to get access to a good life, to a good, you know, to a good 
to a good type of living was if they actually slept with this man and prayed in the hopes that you know what he's going to love me enough to to marry me or at least when he goes back to england or wherever the hell he was from he would leave for her a small inheritance or a small allowance if she had a child by him so a lot of women had fallen for this and a lot of them were being told that you know white men is where it's at white men is where the struggle is at leave this black man alone ada had really fallen for this and she was in the belief that because she can't find a suitable african man to mate with she was going to have to look for a suitable man in a white man where she didn't have to feel like she was the one bringing in a lot of the money and furthermore she really felt that she could do it she would be the lucky one who would find the white man who would provide and protect and actually even marry her and so ada started really looking for this she started looking for this white man now that is when ada meets mr maurice hall maurice was a railway locomotive engineer now what is that it's like someone who just works in railway and makes sure all the trains are running well the rails are good everything is okay so he wasn't really privy to that much money however because ada was african and she had really been preached to through this love scam of how white men have way more money than black men and you know if you get with a white man you're going automatically you're going to be financially better off she really thought that you know what better maurice with that his his, his lower salary than mine because he was making less money than ada at that time better maurice with that salary than being with basically an african man who isn't on my level and who basically will not give me the amount of money that i require or the amount of money that i need and the love that i'm trying to look for so she decided to stay with maurice and one of the main reasons also she, she decided to stay with maurice is the simple fact that maurice had promised ada that he was gonna marry her he had told her that he was the one who was going to hold down anything. He can hold down anything. Forget all of these boys. He's the one who can really hold down anything. Maurice quickly Maurice quickly gets into a relationship with Ada and Ada is really feeling Maurice. Like I can't lie to you guys. My girl was my my good sis was really into him. And the second that Maurice finally, you know, got on the one knee and actually proposed because all this time he was saying he wants to marry her but he hadn't proposed. By the point that Maurice actually gets on the one knee proposes to Ada, Ada is ecstatic. She says yes and quickly but surely they start, you know, planning a life of love and happiness for the future together. Now Although Ada and Maurice were really in love and a lot of African women were looking for a lot of white men to be with because of the romance scam, the issue now became that the people in Africa were getting tired of being colonized, basically. They didn't understand why these people have come here. They've taken our land. Now they're taking our women. Like, the fuck? So now the men in Nigeria and a lot of also the women in Nigeria were getting very tired of the colonization period. So a lot of unrest was brewing. There were a lot of riots happening and so much was really going wrong and really going south. So Miss Ada and Mr. Maurice decide that, you know, the best thing for Maurice and Ada right now is for Maurice to actually return to London, London, England, so that he can actually, you know, wait out all of this panic and all of these riots to, you know, he decided to wait it out, to wait for everything to calm down. Now, as Maurice was supposed to go back to England, Ada and Maurice agreed that Ada would give Maurice her life savings of 400 pounds at that. 400 pounds. During that time, that was a lot of money. She would give Maurice her life savings of 400 pounds and Maurice would basically go over to England and he would be able to buy for Ada the things that she would need for the wedding. Ada wanted a very nice white wedding, which is as well something that this love scam had preached to them that, you know, you get a nice white man, you have a nice white wedding. And you know, forever and ever now you're bound by, by God. Nothing can ever happen to you. So she gives Maurice this money and Maurice goes to the UK with the intention of going to buy the materials needed for Ada and her wedding. He was supposed to buy utensils. He was also supposed to buy new things, things that they were supposed to use and start their new life, like plates, cups, utensils, ETC, and things like that. So as Maurice is all the way in England, obviously they're not talking as much. And yes, they're sending each other letters and shit but you know this is like the 1950s guys there's no telephones or anything like that so the most you're gonna get is like a letter every two weeks to be honest to be frank like the fuck so the two of them aren't really talking much so she just assumes naturally it's because of you know the issues in communication etc like communication hadn't really advanced to that point but however, Maurice was soon due to come back to Nigeria because the unrest had gone down. And Ada was super excited to see Maurice come back, come back to her, come back to, you know, to be the love and the man of her life. She was thinking, finally, I'm the one who has beat the odds. Because a lot of the women who fell for this romance scam would end up sleeping with these white men and have these mixed babies that a lot of black men wouldn't accept even if they married into another family, etc. A lot of black men didn't want to take care of like a mixed baby because it's like, no, you, you decided to 
sell out so you stay there so she had finally won she wasn't going to be the women who were just left as single mothers or the women who were promised love and marriage and they slept with these men and these men just abandoned them she was going to be the lucky one and she was waiting for she was waiting for him with so much hope she was so excited to see him and as soon as mr hall mr maurice hall came back ada and maurice were really they were really feeling the love they were really in it to win it however and because the, with men there's always that however like i'm so sorry to let you guys know but with men there can never just be a happy ending that's like that there always has to be a problem because they never want peace so ada now as she's now received mr maurice her and him have now had a few days of love and bliss etc so she hadn't really thought to unpack just yet as soon as ada now gets herself back together they've now celebrated so now ada has decided to now start cleaning up after maurice and decided to now start getting her life together she picks up maurice's bags to clean up after you know to uh, she picks up maurice's bags so that she can pack his shit so that she can unpack his stuff that he's come back with from the UK and she can see all the things that he's bought for her and you know basically enjoy and reminisce and think of how she's going to style her wedding basically because her wedding dress is supposed to be there etc and only for Miss Ada to open this suitcase and see there was absolutely nothing there for her Ada opens this suitcase and instead of finding wedding gown clothes things she can use to help herself as a woman she now realizes that Maurice went all that way and brought back absolutely nothing for her. He now she wakes Maurice up because during this time he was asleep and she asks him, "You know nigga the fuck?" Okay, not nigga. She now asks him like, "What the hell? Where's my stuff?" Maurice says that he didn't have enough space and he didn't have enough money to buy the things that he needed to buy. He said that he actually did use her money, but he used the money for I don't know what the hell he said he used the money. But he pu- used poor Miss Girl but he used poor miss girl's life savings on basically nonsense because anything apart from what i tell you to do with my money is nonsense that's nonsense you're using it on there's no other excuse as to why you're using my money for nonsense however ada because she likes maurice she was upset for some time but she got over it and she was like it's okay we'll just have like a small little wedding don't worry about it babe and maurice is like really babe you're the best i love you so much i i just i, I no one is like you now as ada is unpacking after all of this has unfolded she's realized that you know it's okay we don't have to have such a grand wedding it's fine it's okay ada now gets out a postcard from the bag and it's a postcard from a hotel and she's wondering what now the postcard had a date which matched exactly during the time of which mr man was in the uk so now miss girl is reading this postcard and it's giving love letter between this man and another woman who now is supposed to who is referring to herself as his wife tell me why tell me why tell me why 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 ada now sits down on the bed and she's very confused to be honest because she's like wait what ada now sits down and starts to contemplate herself because she's like i'm not mad this man has asked to marry me why would another woman be text be, be, be writing you up about how you and her you're married you're booed up you're in love and this is not your wife i'm supposed to be your wife it was then that it now clicks to ada that this lady is referencing herself as a new wife so this isn't as if they this lady is referencing herself as like his wife but in a new manner so it's like he just recently got married to her She's now talking about how her wedding was grand, how she enjoyed everything and she's thanking him for paying for her stay at this luxurious expensive hotel in England, in London, England. Now it clicks in Miss Girl's head that wait a fucking second. Not this man using my money, my life earned money to go and spend it on these silly girls in the UK. And you know in her head probably as me it would be in mind like in my mind i would be thinking that he cheated on me and then left me with no other alternative to leave him because he's now cheated and used my fucking money to pay for this girl to to be booed up with him in a hotel room on top of being booed up with him in a hotel room this girl is also telling me how you paid for a very luxurious wedding when i know as your wife or as your new fiance that you ain't got no fucking money apart from the money that i gave you so miss girl now goes and wakes this nigga the fuck up and she's now asking him like are you crazy like are you are you mad 
Like, is it crack? Is that what you smoke on that side? Is that is it crack that you guys smoke on that side? And Mr. Man is telling her no. He's trying to deny everything. So, but she's asking him, what did you use the money to do? What did you use the money to do? And he's now starting... Uh, 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 she, he doesn't have an answer. He doesn't have an answer for her. As Ada realizes that Maurice is a fucking liar, she now decides, you know what, enough is enough. Because you want to carry me for idiot. I will not stand for this bullshit. Ada picks up a skizors. Do you know a skizors? And she just jabbed, she jabbed this man. She just said, pe, pe, pe. she jabbed this man and this man was not more. She jabbed this man God knows how many times because I saw so many different reports. Some were saying 13, some were saying 9. But she just know she jabbed in anger. She jabbed in anger. And by the time she was done with Maurice, Maurice was perished. Maurice was no more a wife. And I'm telling you guys this story during that time. Especially, like, how do you, like, a black woman has stabbed a white woman. I mean a white man. Do you know how that story took the media by storm? That story took the media by storm. The media said, no, what? What, please? And on top of this, this is during the time when colonialism is happening. I mean, when anti-colonialist sentiment is really on the rise. So people very quickly started to think that Ada was not just a a woman who was angry because this man has gone and squandered my life savings on another girl that he just met after me I've been with him for all this time people started seeing it as like a revolutionary call that Ada was just a black person tired of the oppressive nature of the white people and so basically Ada became the poster child for you know women standing up against white men and you know Africans basically taking a stand against the white people and with time people are now rioting on behalf of Ada and what Ada stands for but Ada is busy in prison very much so crying she's very much so crying she's thinking what the actual shit now I'm in prison because of this man I am broke I don't have any reputation no one is ever gonna hire me again again i'm a criminal because of this man and everyone is just there thinking that ada wow ada wow ada wow you are the queen as, now as i'm saying people were really interested in this case so at the trial a lot of people did show up outside the jail like the trial house to boy to really talk about how ada shouldn't be jailed and you know basically it was the white man's fault why did he go and play with her like that this is his fault if he didn't basically want to be you know stabbed around he shouldn't have played around with somebody's arts that didn't stand the prosecution tried to say that it was in self-defense that she did this because she was provoked by him to do this the provocation was that he went and squandered her life savings but naturally this didn't stand one the defense was weak and two ada was a black woman who had just stabbed a white man during colonial nigeria it was never going to be allowed to stand now ada was jailed on june 18th of 1953 and they actually sentenced her to death like they were not gonna have this with her like she was going to get the ultimate punishment of the ultimate punishment however upon you know the riots and everything the judges were actually told to reverse the the findings because you know people didn't the like, tensions were already high enough and now you're going to go and you know you jailing this woman is basically solidifying her as the face for justice and the face for activism so the judges were told to reverse this ruling and just basically give her a life sentence ada was given a life sentence however after nigeria had you know achieved their independence and everything was fine she was given clemency which means basically mercy and on the 1st of october in 1961 which is the first anniversary of nigeria's independence ada was let out and she was revered as a freedom fighter however many people don't actually realize that ada did what she did not because she was trying to freedom fight but because but because this man broke her heart bro like how do i give you money to go and do something for me only for you to go there and just be doing the foolishness ada would never get any compensation for her you know for what she actually had to like for the loss in her savings and for the loss in her money because 400 pounds back then you guys that's 2000 pounds of today's money do you know how much you can actually do with those 2000 pounds a lot of people don't have 2000 pounds in their bank accounts so but yeah guys that is the story of miss ada johnson she died a hero basically in nigeria and a lot of people really do revere ada however according to having heard the story child i don't think she was looking for reverence i think she was just an angry woman who was really pissed that her man really tried her like that
and yeah anyway guys thank you so much for coming to my channel i really enjoyed telling you guys this story i hope you enjoyed it as much as i enjoyed telling it i've tried to put this thing in the middle of my head and i don't know why but this hair has just refused to stay in the middle of my head but you know what guys we move do you know what we do we continue to move anyway i really hope you enjoyed today's video i hope you like comment share and subscribe do any of them or do all of them because that either way my channel will still continue to grow my channel will continue to grow if you do either one because you'll be telling the algorithm that yeah miss girl is doing the doing things here and everybody needs to be saying this which will then lead to my channel being pushed more and more also if you want to put in any special case requests so any special friday video requests please follow me on any of my social medias i will have them down below 